Hey, Brian. Hey, AC. Thanks for talking about What If with me. What's hey. up, man? Thanks. Thanks for having us. <laughs> of course. Of course. I'm sure this is a long day. I hope I have some fun questions you haven't already been asked. <laughs> oh, you have uh, the infinity gauntlet. Oh. That's right. That's right. We are. We're still in the infinity saga in my house. We're living in the past. <laughs> <laughs> or is it the past because of the multiverse? It's Ooh. ever present. Something to think about. Something Indeed. to think about. Brian, I actually want to start with you, man, because I was looking at, at your resume and I'm so excited for you because you've worked in art departments and creative efforts on so many different Marvel titles. And now you're stepping up as a director. And I just want to hear what it was like to get that opportunity to really put your stamp on something top to bottom as the director after all these years of experience. <laughs> Uh, it was a blast and it was, it was an honor to get that call from Brad and, and, and even suggest it, you know, it was, it was, I was stoked, you know, for lack of a better, to actually be able to play, you know, in that sandbox with them and all their toys, you know, I think it was great, but um, you know, it, it's funny. It, it, it's a great opportunity and I certainly appreciate it, but I mean, but you're only as cool as you're only as good as your team, you know, and we had an amazing team and with, with AC and, and Matt Chauncey and just incredible writing and, and then Brad and, and Lou, Victoria and Kevin, and then our art team. And we just acquired a lot of really great people and they were all behind it. And we were all just kind of like holding hands together and saying, let's make something amazing guys. Let's go for this. And, and everyone was just like hells to the, yeah. And so really, I, I mean, I'm mean, I just standing on the back of what everyone else was able to help bring, you know what I mean? And, and just, helping bring the cool out of everyone that was a part of it. Like this can, you're doing, this is amazing. Let's do more of that. That's great. Let's do more of that. So I, I think that's been a lot of, a lot of fun. And, and I, and, you know, from being on set with um, watching um, the Russo brothers work on infinity war and, and, and end game. Cause I was on that and, and work just being in their presence a little bit, as well as all the other directors I had a chance to work with. It's like, be able to like see how different people flow and do their thing. And you're like, this is all great. You're all pretty rad, but you're all <laughs> uniquely you. And I think that's the key. You have to be you, but then play and then encourage everyone else to come play with you. And I'm yeah. hopefully, hopefully I did that because that, that's, that's the whole thing. Hey, through three, man. Good work, man. I can't wait to see what you do with those back seven. I'm excited for it. <laughs> Uh, AC, you're, as a head writer, you're, you're, you're writing a series that takes place at all these alternate worlds, which is not the traditional Marvel experience, because usually you have to kind of fit it into the puzzle. And I know everybody gets their bit of freedom, but uh, you get to have total freedom to do whatever you want. How did you take advantage of that opportunity? When I was brought on to What If, I was given the mandate of go make 10 small Marvel movies, like go have fun. Just don't do anything we're already doing in the movies, which meant for the first three months, I walked face first into every Marvel project. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Until finally there was a moment of like, let her see Endgame, this is getting cruel, and then lead her into the stuff we're doing. So after that little trip, it was kind of like, okay, I can go weird, I can go different, I can take these characters and places that we've never even thought of going. I can kind of get in there and show Nick Fury having a crisis of faith. Like, is he on the right track? I can get in there and show a completely different side of Doctor Strange, really explore some meaty materials of like loss and love. And for that, that was the greatest gift. For me, these characters are so iconic, not because of just the silhouettes and the toys, it's the heart it's the hero and um, it's the finding the humanity behind the shield so my job was to go in there and just find out why we love them what is the human connection and explore that in as many weird cool ways as possible yeah i i, I see is that a fantastic uh, what if spider-man joined the fantastic yes. Four? <laughs> uh, yes. sign of sign of things to come maybe <laughs> i wish it's the very first ep um issue of what if and a yeah. little I was like, I immediately went on eBay when I was pitching the show and bought it. I was like, this is going to increase in value. <laughs> Smart play. That's, that is insider training right there. Okay. <laughs> I need you to text me next time so I can have the same upper hand. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, 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 earlier in the press conference, it sounded like characters like T'Challa and Peggy Carter and probably some others that we're going to see along the way will be characters who are part of a through line going through the whole show. And obviously the watcher is a part of that. I love to hear about whoever wants to weigh in on this kind of 
the watcher's role in maybe wrangling all these people or just overseeing. I don't know if he gets involved. Just, how does that all play out? What can you say about it? Well, probably can't say much. I don't know, AC, do you want to tackle this one? Well, how is this? The watcher, yes, he's the omnipotent force over watching. Oh, I'm sorry, he's the omnipotent force overseeing the entire multiverse. But the idea is, is that he gets more and more curious, more and more invested in these heroes and these characters. Like us, he starts to follow their losses and loves and triumphs with, he's a hardcore fan. And so the idea is, is that as the show evolves, so does the watcher. Now, he famously in the comic books, he says, I see all, I know all, but I never interfere. Well, if we know one thing about the Marvel Universe, anything's possible. Mm-hmm. And rules are made to be broken. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Listen, thank you so much for the time. Congratulations on What If, and I can't wait for everybody to see it on August 11th. 